with Brazil out yesterday and France advancing. I thought it's the perfect day for the headbutt jersey. Zidane's 2006 away jersey where he not only made the headbutt as everyone remembers probably but also this wonderful wonderful performance against Brazil in the quarterfinals. And yeah it kind of summarizes what happened yesterday in one shirt. Uh, the big question of course is now who is the favorite? Um, with the big favorite out, who will be next in line? Uh, will it be France or will it be Belgium? Uh, the Belgium chance of probability were always lowered by Brazil pushing them down. And I ran the numbers. And let's have a look. Let's get right to it. Who is the new favorite? According to my ratings, it's Belgium, but by the slimmest of margins over France. Uh, as we'll see, they're very, very evenly matched. And yeah, uh, Belgium's stumbling block was Brazil. Um, and they got over this big hump. And now they're sitting pretty on the top of the ratings. Um, reminds me a lot about the uh, 2010 World Cup when there was a similar situation between the Netherlands and uh, Brazil. The Benelux fate, seemingly. Um, I'm not sure if the path to the finals is as clear for Belgium as it was back then for the Netherlands, who were clearly, clearly the third best team in this World Cup. And I think also that Belgium is probably, of the ones in the quarterfinal, probably the third best team. But now they have the potentially second best team that they have to play against uh, in France. So it's not as clear as it was in 2010 in that case. But still, very interesting parallel. Now, uh, England is the second favorite, Croatia, uh, third favorite, Croatia the fourth, and uh, Sweden and Russia kind of drop off. If we see favorite wins with England and Croatia today, then yeah, uh, I don't think this will change a lot because the only 7% that will be distributed and they probably will go on to those two. So that's how uh, the standings according to World Cup winning probabilities are at the moment. Uh, also, Brazil is behind Uruguay because uh, they tied to against Switzerland, whereas Uruguay won all their games up until the quarterfinal. Uh, expect a tournament. We already know how the group stage went. We really need to look at the upper bracket. And yeah, France, Belgium here, and it's as close as it can be, I think. I have not really seen a matchup that close, especially that late in the uh, uh, round. So uh, this is really that, that even. It might have been that the Argentina-Germany uh, quarterfinal in 2010 was similarly, but uh, I would have to go back to it. It's remarkably close here. Uh, so it's a toss-up according to the ratings. Um, I Personally, I would still favor France because they saved more energy than Belgium did for sure. So for that reason I would give a slight edge to France but I can un understand if Belgium is rated higher also with the big win over Brazil. Um, yeah, that can carry them through. What does this mean for uh, the rest of the tournament? We have, an ex we have a projected Belgium-England final, the matchup that we did not get in the group stage where they played second string teams. So I think this would be intriguing to actually see best on best between Belgium and England and I also think this could be a nice final, although not many pe people would have put money on that one. About also a France-England final, um, given the toss-up is also a rivalry that is surely uh, will generate headlines, let's put it that way. I think now that we have a European Championship at the World Cup, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I think all the matchups have something to them. They're not the big barn burners. France, England probably would be, but it's still um, it's still interesting. I actually, in a way, I find it more intriguing now that only European teams are left, and uh, the chances that we see a first-time winner or uh, are quite high. I would say. So that's always exciting and that we see a final that you don't see every time and it kind of follows the trend that, that we've seen at the Euros as well. France, Croatia still the projected third place game. Uh, performance indices, no changes in the top four. Of course Belgium and France are rising since Belgium had the harder road. 
having to overcome Brazil to the semis, um, the Belgium rating, of course, is now a little bit higher than the France rating. Uruguay had a quite good World Cup, so they can be proud of themselves. I think everyone expected them to go out in the round of 16, the latest. So making a quarterfinal for such a small yet very successful soccer nation uh, is a big thing. So tip of the head to Uruguay. And how far is Brazil falling? Well, 20th spot from 15 to 20. Now they have a negative final rating. Um, yeah, uh, Brazil will be disappointed and I think rightfully so I mean with that squad you could you probably should have won the World Cup but yesterday it was really a game on the knife's edge it's not that Brazil it, I don't see it as a failure of Brazil uh, necessarily it was just one of those unlucky games that always can happen in knockout stages um, just look at Barcelona against Roma in the quarterfinals of the Champions League this year it's also interesting that the three biggest stars in the world are all lumped together here. We have Neymar for Brazil, Ronaldo for Portugal, Messi for Argentina. And I think given the performances of these teams, uh, it's also the order seems about right. Well, let me know what you think about all these rankings, ratings, um, chances of the teams. I'm very curious how it will develop from now on. And I will talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.